A couple of weeks ago, I published a video where I talked about a couple of topics that I never got around making a video about. And I asked you guys what would be the topic that you would like to see and what would be the video that I should make for this particular channel. And one of the topics that came up on top was the Dolby Atmos workflow in Logic Pro. Now, I've never really gotten around uh, doing anything with Logic Pro simply because I never got warm with that particular digital audio workstation. There was something that didn't really click with me. So I used this little motivation to kind of dig a little bit deeper into Logic Pro. And as it turns out, the Dolby Atmos workflow in Logic Pro is incredibly easy and incredibly straightforward. And uh, I hate to say that because I do know that I have a couple of Windows maximalists in my audience. Um, Apple really nailed that one. So this is a really, really good one. So this is what we're going to do today, uh, Dolby Atmos and Logic Pro. Let's get started. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. In that link is in the description below. And since you already added, please also don't forget to press the like button, especially if you get any value out of my videos. It really helps out the channel and makes my videos more visible to other people. And with that being said, let's start up Logic. Now, the first thing to know when we're working with Dolby Atmos and Logic is that Logic provides a completely internal workflow for Dolby Atmos. So um, it's not like what you would normally see in Cubase, Nuendo, or in Pro Tools, where you have an, an implementation essentially of the external Dolby Atmos renderer and sort of an interface that looks like the external Dolby Atmos renderer. In Logic, everything is completely integrated into the digital audio workstation. So in that sense, it's 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 somewhat comparable to, to what uh, Blackmagic Design did with DaVinci Resolve Fairlight. Um, the, the thing with logic is that everything is really streamlined to the way that it becomes very, very efficient. That has its advantages, that has its disadvantages. The advantage, obviously, is that we only have to do a couple of steps in order to get get going. So there isn't really much we need to do in order to set up a Dolby Atmos project. Now, when you create a new project, the only thing really that uh, is critical is that you need to select the spatial audio format to be Dolby Atmos. That's really what all you really need to do. Uh, so you need to set that from off to Dolby Atmos. And then there are a couple of other settings that sort of are, are um, in addition to that. The first thing is that we need to set the surround format. Now, the surround format is the channel layout that you are using for bad channels. Now, for those of you who have never worked with Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos is a format that essentially combines a channel-based layout, which are the so-called bad tracks, with an object-based layout, which are the so-called objects. And the, uh, the bad tracks, which sort of s serve as there's something that embeds the entire Dolby Atmos music piece. So that's sort of, that's the way to think of it. It, it really provides the, the bedding of everything. That's sort of the idea. And the, the bed essentially can be in, in different types of channel layouts. And the highest channel count that Dolby Atmos allows is uh, 7.1.2. Now in Logic, we can select between three different options. We can say uh, either the 7.1.2, which once again is the standard way to do things, or we can also kind of use a 7.1 or a 5.1 a bad layout. Now I'm going to select uh, 7.1.2 because once again, that's the, the way it's usually done. The next thing we need to do is we need to select the sample rate and the frame rate and there are requirements for Dolby Atmos. Uh, Dolby Atmos needs to have a sample rate of either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz. Logic is nice enough to kind of do that for you. So if you choose something that is not 48 or 96, it will actually uh, export everything in 48. So regardless of what you're choosing here, if it's not not 48 or 96, uh, it will kind of uh, default to 48. So it makes sense to just kind of set that manually to 48. And the same thing is for the frame rate. Now we are not going to really use the frame rate here because we are working with music and uh, we don't really have video and we actually can't do video with Logic in that particular case. Uh, but the frame rate is necessary for compatibility reasons um, and uh, Logic requires you to have a frame rate of 24 frames per second. And once again, Logic is nice enough to actually convert it to 24 if you choose something else. So regardless of what you're choosing here, it's always going to be 24, so we might as well just choose 24. And that's what I've done here. So uh, with that being said, uh, uh, everything else is just the way it's supposed to be, and I simply say create a new project, and uh, it's going to be an empty project. 
Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an audio track, and this audio track that I'm going to add is going to serve as a bad track. So it's going to serve as a bad for the Dolby Atmos production or the, the, the short Dolby Atmos piece that I'm creating. Now, for the moment being, I'm going to leave everything uh, the way it is. Just make sure that the output format is surround. We're going to talk a little bit about the input format. I'm just going to leave that as surround for the moment being. And I'm simply going to say create. And uh, that's essentially uh, create that. Now, if I'm looking at that particular track, I now see that the track is routed into the uh, output bus. And this output bus already has the Atmos renderer on there. So let's open up the Atmos renderer. And uh, we can see that this Atmos renderer does not look like the Dolby Atmos renderer. So it's really integrated. It's, it's really bare bones. It is, it is really kind of uh, scaled down to a level that is just uh, perfect to, in my <laughs> professional opinion. So it, it's, it's very, very straightforward to use. Now, there's one thing that I'd like to point out here, and that is that we can choose the monitoring format. And there's something very significant here that no other digital audio workstation can do. And that is if we're going through the monitoring format, we see that we can make a couple of different options. First of all, we have the binaural options and we can choose the Dolby renderer, which is the standard Dolby renderer. I'm assuming that is the implementation that comes from Dolby themselves. And then we can choose the Apple, the Apple renderer, either with the standard spatial audio profile or with the personal spatial audio profile. So I'm assuming if you've ever created a, sp a personal spatial audio profile by essentially using your uh, Apple AirPods or uh, the AirPods Max, then this will essentially show up here. But there are two different different options, additional options here that I think are really, really significant. And that is because the AirPods and the AirPods Max actually have um, head straightening capabilities. So essentially they can actually kind of give information about the position of the head if you wear them. Uh, you can actually, if you have them connected of here, monitoring your Adobe Atmos production with the AirPods Max or the AirPods Pro, you can actually choose uh, head tracking enabled. And I have to say that this works extremely, extremely well. So uh, for those of you who have been watching my channel for quite some time, you guys know that I did a lot of videos about how to set up head tracking in different scenarios and in different applications. But I have to say this is the most convenient and most straightforward way to do that. So you just put on your AirPods, uh, AirPods Pro, or AirPods Max, and then you set the uh, audio so that you actually monitor through those AirPods Max. And as soon as you do that, you can simply select the banal option here, the renderer with head tracking, and it will completely do a completely immersive experience. And you will be in, uh, you will essentially experience your Dolby Atmos production in exactly the same way you would, you would experience that with a very, very sophisticated 7.1.4, 9.1.6 uh, channel layout. Uh, it is really, really beautiful. It is really, really well done. And this is actually the one thing I think that might kind of convince me to actually do everything with logic in the future because this is so super convenient. Now, obviously, we also have a couple of other different options depending on what your speaker layout is. Now, I'm going to just choose the Apple renderer because of the way I'm kind of working with my headphones here and kind of the recording. I can't really use my AirPods, um, but uh, but essentially kind of for the purpose of this video, this is perfectly fine. So let's get started and let's uh, drop a little loop into this track. Now, I'm going to use a couple of uh, loops that I've used in previous videos. For those of you who have been uh, watching my channel for quite some time, you're we are familiar with those. Um, I apologize if I reuse the same audio all over and over again, but uh, it kind of it, it makes sure that essentially there is no uh, copyright strike and everything is fine. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a drum uh, loop onto the uh, bed channel that I have here. So let's let's drop that here, um, and let's maybe kind of change the. Um, the loop here and let's kind of make that a little bit larger so that we kind of see a little bit something and uh, there are a couple of things that I first need to do and the, 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 the first thing is that I need to change the input format so essentially I need to change the channel mode button and the reason for that is because at the moment this is assumed to be a, a 7.1.2 
file, but it actually isn't. So it's going to kind of do something weird with the with the panning. So in order to make sure that that logic does it correctly, we need to kind of uh, tell it that uh, it actually kind of is expecting a stereo, a stereo kind of uh, a loop. And uh, so for that, uh, essentially, we need to change the channel mode. Now, if you long click on the channel mode, you actually have the different options here. Uh, you can also simply just kind of click once and it's going to change to uh, the stereo. And uh, as soon as I do that, that the actual uh, render or the actual panning device is going to pop up here. And uh, this is going to be the, the panner that I'm going to use. So I can actually change the uh, the panning of this uh, stereo track in my 7.1.2 speaker layout. So these are the 7.1.2 speakers. So they're essentially the seven blue ones are the horizontal ones. And then I have the, the two hate speakers here. And I can uh, then essentially upscale or upmix uh, this this drum track. So let me just kind of uh, get something going here. So let's just play that. So I, I can essentially kind of move that. And let's let's move that maybe a little bit uh, kind of in, into the air. So if I'm choose changing to the spherical panel, so let's let's move that up here. So we have a little bit of elevation here, and. Uh, and I think that is pretty much fine, just so that we have everything, that we have stuff going on on all ten channels. So um, now this would be now the the bed, and obviously we can have have different tracks that all feed into the bed. All we really need to do is we need to make sure that we are going to send everything to the surround output, and the surround output then once again is going to be sent into the Atmos renderer. The Atmos renderer is is, is essentially kind of here, and uh, so let's add two objects, and uh, to be more exact, let's add two object tracks because there are actually four objects. These are two stereo tracks, and these two stereo tracks essentially end up being four objects, so essentially two stereo pairs. So let's just add two. So I have like a bass loop here. Let's add that here. And uh, I have a synth loop here. Oops, where are we? Synth loop. And uh, and then essentially what I need to do is I need to um, create or I need to change those tracks in such a way that uh, that uh, Logic understands that those are um, those are objects. Now, uh, the way what you need to do is you need to go into the in case it, it actually isn't already set. Because in my in my particular case, actually, Logic remembered the way I wanted it, and uh, it actually already did that correctly. But what you would normally need to do is you would need to go down to the output uh, kind of settings, and you will need to change the output to surround, and then the panning to the 3D object panner. Now, the 3D object panner makes sure that the panning is done um, according to the um, it's essentially that it is penned as an object into the Dolby Atmos render. So let's, let's select that. As soon as we do that, we see we have a different type of panner here. This is now the um, object panner. And the other thing that we see, if we open up the uh, Atmos render again, we see that the uh, base uh, is now, the base track is now kind of recognized as a 3D object. And it kind of also tells me that this is a stereo object. So it's actually two objects in the Dolby Atmos renderer. I can see that also here uh, in the uh, essentially input object channel, so essentially I say that I have two channels of the 180 object channels now selected and these two channels once again are the left and right channel of the bass track. And then let's also do the same thing for the synth. So let's close that here and uh, let's do for the synth. Once again we need to go to surround and we need to select the 3D object panel. If you can't select that by the way, uh, make sure that you have the correct input setting. So this, need to be, this needs to be stereo. Um, in order to be able to select that, so so let's let's uh, let's select the 3D object panel here, and as soon as I do that, the synth track also shows up as an object, and it now tells me that I have four channels, uh, essentially selected of the 118 channels that are able or that are possible in Dolby Atmos. So let's let's just kind of listen on how that sounds. And then we can do the obvious thing. We can uh, kind of pan these uh, objects in three-dimensional space. So let's just do a little bit. So let's let's open up maybe the op the uh, the Atmos render again. And let's uh, let's pan the the base. So it can essentially kind of move that. And as I see, as I'm moving that around, I also have the same uh, movement going on in the Dolby Atmos renderer. I can uh, change the height, I can change the size of the sources, of the audio sources. 
Now, the one thing that I found curious is the fact that um, in this in this particular panel, in the in the um, 3D object banner that Logic provides, you can't really change the height information of the two channels independently. So you you couldn't create something that is asymmetric. So it, it, you can't do something, for example, when you want the, the right channel uh, higher than the left channel or vice versa. You can't really do that with that, uh, with that banner. I found that to be very, very curious. And uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of interesting. I, I think uh, it's it's an interesting approach because what it really does is it it kind of makes everything very very simple. Uh, so you can't really do much complicated things. You but you can do the things that you would normally need. So in 99% of the cases, this is perfectly fine. And if you ever get into the situation where you actually want to have things asymmetric, where you want to have one channel higher than the other, uh, what you can do is you can simply split it up into two mono objects and then essentially pan these two mono objects independently. And uh, obviously, we can also do the same thing for the synth. So let's go into the synth and let's move those um, maybe just a little bit so that we have something going on here. And let's uh, as soon as I play that, essentially, I will see that here in the in the renderer. And that's pretty much it. So that's really everything you need to do. Uh, and you just go on and create your Adobe Atmos project, pan your tracks around, uh, move things around, choose the um, head tracking option if you have AirPods um, Pro or AirPods Max uh, headphones. Uh, that then allows you to really kind of listen to it in a fully immersive way. It is just very, very, very simple to, to use and very, very straightforward kind of to create something that's uh, that, that is Dolby Atmos. Now, the, the final thing I want to just talk about briefly is the, how do you export everything in Logic? And the way to export it is also very straightforward. So essentially what you would do is, and I've already kind of made that selection. So I have this little Dolby Atmos project now, which has one, uh, which essentially has one bad channel or one bad track. This is the drums track. And then I have two object tracks that kind of end up being once again four objects in the Dolby Atmos renderer. And uh, I've kind of made this selection here. So what I would need to do is I would need to go into file into the export setting. So not bounce, uh, don't bounce. We're going to go into export and in export we need to export as ADM BWF. That is sort of the, the master file format that is used. And you can either select the uh, to save the entire project or the selection. In a particular case I'm going to just uh, kind of save the selection. So let's click on that and what it will do is it will essentially kind of come up with a little dialogue. So let's call that test and uh, let's drop that onto the desktop and let's create save. And uh, that is pretty much it. So let's open up our test file with the external Adobe Atmos renderer to see if everything was actually exported correctly. So let's open up the Adobe Atmos renderer. Now, a couple of you have asked me, uh, how do we actually uh, open up a master file in the Adobe Atmos Ranger? Well, it's actually very straightforward. All you really need to do is you need to go into the file menu and here you have open master file. So that's what you're going to do. So open up a master file. Now, the one that we're going to open up is the test file here. And let's open that. And as soon as I open that, I see it recognizes the fact that it has four objects. These four objects, once again, are two stereo channels. So there are four individual objects, but essentially two stereo pairs. And then we have the 10 channel bed track here. And let's just play if everything is playing correctly. And indeed it does. And that is essentially extremely straightforward to do and extremely too easy to use. And by the way, one of the things that I found interesting is that you now can also use the Adobe Atmos master file as sort of almost as an exchange format, because once you have the Adobe Atmos master file, um, you can actually also import that in DaVinci Resolve, or you can uh, import that into a Nuendo and then essentially continue there. So it almost becomes almost like an exchange format, which, which I found is, is very, very interesting. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Um, now, my final verdict about the Adobe Atmos workflow in Logic is that it is probably the most, the easiest kind of to get started. So if you are somebody who wants to get into Adobe Atmos and you have a Mac and you have Logic, this is the perfect way to start. It doesn't get easier than that. And uh, it's very straightforward and it works extremely well. And uh, most importantly, you can do head tracking uh, without any complicated setup. 
you just kind of make that selection, put on your AirPods, and that's it. And you are in an immersive uh, Dolby Atmos studio, which is really, really fascinating that it is possible to do it that way. Anyway, uh, this is everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching. If you uh, have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below. Or once again, join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.